So today's lesson is chords and tangents. We're going to do tangents first. We've kind of already gone over the theorem that we're going to go over with tangents, and then we will go over three chord theorems. So one tangent theorem, three chord theorems. The first um, tangent theorem is already in your vocab, but we're just going to reiterate it. Let's reiterate first what a tangent is. How many times does a tangent intersect a circle? Once. Once and only once. So on that green picture, these um, tangent lines, even though the lines are so bold, it's hard to tell where it's intersecting, but I promise it's only intersecting once. What is that point called where a tangent line intersects a circle? Point of tangency. P-O-T, the point of tangency. The other picture that's red, red bad, um, means that they're either intersecting zero times or two times, which is not legal. Those are not tangent lines. So here's the first theorem. Go ahead and write it down in your notes. I know it's on your vocab sheet, but I want you to have it written out as a theorem in your notes. Hypothesis. If a line is tangent to a circle, so that's what you're assuming, that it is tangent. Conclusion, then it is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. I like to say a chant. I like to say, when a radius meets a tangent line, you get a right angle. And then every time you see a radius meeting a tangent line, you're going to add a 90 degree angle marking. When a radius meets a tangent line, you get a right angle. So let's try this theorem out on a couple of examples. Decide where to add a right angle marking. So that's what is tempting to do, and we accidentally do that sometimes. Change that last annotation. Okay, erase that green one. So the theorem says where a radius meets a tangent line, you get a right angle. And in this blue picture, it's tempting to put it here, I know, but it's when a radius meets a tangent line, you get a right angle. So that's where they go there, and then good in this picture with the orange where a radius meets a tangent line, you get a right angle, or two. <laughs> okay, go ahead and solve this problem. We have circle C. Segment BA is tangent to circle C at point A. The distance from B to A is 12, and the distance from A to C is 5. Draw this picture. Solve for the distance from B to D. And then private chat me your answer. All right, let's start going over this one. What do we know? Anyone speak up and tell me what we know. It's a right triangle. When the radius meets a tangent line, you get a right angle. Very good. So ABC is a right triangle. So what did you employ? What did you use? The Pythagorean, the Pythagorean theorem. This one happened to be a Pythagorean triple. So we know that CB is 13. Oh, Hi. no. C, B is 13. We don't know B, D. We can't just divide it by 2, right? You don't just say 6.5 each. What do we do? Since A, C is 5, then so is C, B because it's a radius. C, very good explanation. C, D is a radius. All radii in one circle are congruent. So if I have 13 units and I've used up 5, how many remain? 8. A subtraction problem. The answer is 8. Are we good, guys? Those of you who got it wrong, light bulbs went on. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. let's do another one. Now, I will warn you, this one is going to be a little ugly. There are going to be some radicals, so be patient. Go ahead and sketch this picture. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. AC is a common tangent. All that means is that it's tangent to both circles at the same time. That's what common tangent means. AE is 10, BD is 3, and BC is 12. So I'm labeling what we know. Where can we put those right angle markings? What letters can we put those right angle markings at? A and B. Good, not E and D. Good, points of tangency. Points of tangency, awesome. I will give you a few minutes to solve. Go ahead and try it. Let's do the easiest one first. 
We're going to do C, D, and it's not going to be pretty. Tell me the equation. Say it out loud. 3 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. Awesome. You can use any variable over here. You can even put C, D squared. Awesome. What is 3 squared plus 12 squared, everybody? What is it? Use your mic. 153. All right. Woo. Okay. So, what's the opposite of squaring something? Square rooting. Square rooting. And what do you get? Final answer. 3 square root 17. Good. Any questions about 3 root 17? So, you had 9 times 17. The 9 becomes 3 and 3. 17 cannot be factor treed. It is prime, so it stays in the radical. So the square root of 153 simplifies to 3 root 17. All right, who could set me up a proportion to find not AB, but to find AC? Because that's mm -hmm. actually the one you have to find first. Can I? Yes, please, I'm ready. You can find it? No, I'm ready. Oh, you're going to annotate? Yes? Okay, so you did 3 is to 12 as 10 is to X. I do like to go from one triangle to the other. So when I do mine, I did do, but it's no different. I did 3 is to 10 as 12 is to AC. But it's the same proportion as you did. So good job. So I did the radius is to the radius as the side or the tangent portion is to this tangent portion right here. It's beautiful when you cross multiply, thank goodness. The answer is, like y'all said, 40. And then how can we get AB now? Subtract 12. Good. Not drawn to scale. 40 minus 12. Everyone okay with 28 for the distance from A to B? Yes. Fine. Okay. So now there are like there are like six different ways you could write that same proportion. Okay. So now we're gonna find E C. And E C is gonna help us find E D. What ideas do you have to find E C? Love it. That's what I went to first as well. Instead of a proportion, we know two sides of that right triangle. If we know two sides, let's do Pythagorean theorem always. All right. So when you add those together, what do you get? 1,700? Yeah. Well, that's nice because actually 1,700 is 17 times 100. What's the square root of 100? 10. Yay! So this is actually beautiful now because these are going to be like terms. We're going to be able to subtract them. The square root of 1,700 is 10 root 17. That's EC. What is it asking for? ED. ED. So if I have 10 root 17s and I take away three of them, how many root 17s do I have? Seven. Yay! You just subtract the coefficient. 7, 17. 7 root 17. Tangent's done. Check it off your list. We did the hardest example we could do. Let's do chords. So title the next section of your notes, chords. Chords have more theorems, but they're not going to be as hard as the tangent examples. So more theorems, less difficulty. Here we go. Go ahead and number your paper, one through three, and draw these pictures. Now save yourself some room because you're going to need to write a theorem next to each one. So draw these pictures. These represent the beginnings of our theorems. And we'll write out a theorem next to each one. There are three chord theorems to go over. These pictures actually represent the hypothesis of each theorem. So if this green thing happens, if the darker green thing happens, if the maroon thing happens, and then we're going to write a conclusion. For this next part, you can just watch. We're just going to talk about what the first theorem might be. All right, so take a look at my two pictures. In one of them, the hypothesis of the theorem is happening, and in the other one, the hypothesis of the theorem is not happening. 
So we need to figure out what the conclusion is going to be. What is the if? What are we assuming, guys? Anybody? If it's perpendicular. Ooh, pick a different, pick a different word. If the radius. Perpendicular. If the radius is. Perpendicular to a chord. Yes. Okay. Very good. If a radius. That first one is a radius. If a radius is perpendicular to a chord, see how here the radius is not perpendicular to the chord? In the second picture, it's the theorem is not going to happen. In the first picture, it is. What is it if my if I promised you my drawings were to scale? What do you think is happening in the first picture that's not happening into the second picture? The chord might be bisected. Do y'all see it? Do you see it? This matches this. In this picture, does this look like it's the same length as this one? No. I tried to make them not the same length. Let me let me trace it. Trace it. And then I get my select tool. Oh, my goodness. Not the same length, right? So if a radius is perpendicular to a chord, what does it do to the chord? It bisects it. Y'all said it. Go ahead and write it down. I need to get my eraser out. A radius that is perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord and its arcs. You already have the picture. Don't redraw this picture. What you need to add to your picture is tick marks. That's the conclusion of the theorem. And then you can put this if you want. This is just me writing the theorem with symbols. You don't have to put what's in green. So you need the picture and you need the theorem. You don't need what's in green unless you have extra time to write it down. Now, y'all don't need to write the converse, but I do want to let you know the converse is also true. Let's look at the converse real quick. I'll come back to this page. The converse says if what? Look at the first picture. If the radius bisects the chord, then what? What can I add to my picture? There you go. But if the radius doesn't bisect the chord, it's not perpendicular. Not. Okay? So the converse is true, but no, you don't need to write the converse down. It just is the same theorem, but you write it backwards. Let's go to the next theorem. Two chords. Don't write this down. Don't write this down. Two chords are equidistant from the center. What does equidistant mean? Equal distance. Same distance, equal distance. Okay. What conclusions can we draw? First of all, how would I show that these are the same distance? How can I show that AB is the same distance from O as CD is? R. Wait, no. Ash Where? Because if I have to put these, that means the chords are congruent. It doesn't mean they're the same distance from the center, right? Draw a line to the center. There you go. Okay. So I have to draw a segment saying, this distance is the same as this distance. And when you measure the distance from a point to a segment, it's always the perpendicular distance. You can't just draw any old segment you want. You have to draw the shortest segment you can, which is going to be perpendicular. So I'm just letting you know you're going to see these little segments with, that are perpendicular. Okay. But you did say something earlier. What do you think the conclusion is? If these are, well, let me say something else. What's the longest chord you could possibly draw in a circle? Longest chord. The yeah. diameter is the longest chord. Now that one goes through the center. So as we get further away from the center, what happens to the chords? They get shorter. They get shorter and shorter and shorter. But if these are the same distance away, if this one's three inches away and CD is three inches away, then what's it's true? Equal. They're equal in length. Yeah, let's just go ahead and write it down. Chords that are equidistant from the center are congruent. So the hypothesis is that they're the same distance away, and the conclusion is that they're the same length. AB is congruent to CD. If they're equidistant, then they're the same length. The converse is, of course, true. If the segments, if the chords are congruent, then they're equidistant. You don't need to write that. Just know that the original and the converse are both true. So I could add tick marks to my picture. It's kind of hard to add tick marks since there's an intersection. So you'd have to kind of be a little bit, you'd have to mess up your picture a little bit. 
this is the same length as this. One more thing happens if chords are equidistant from the center. If those two chords are the same length, then what do you think about the measure of arc AB versus the measure of arc B? CD. Congruent. Yeah. Congruent. That's the last theorem of the day. Congruent chords intercept. They grab congruent arcs. Congruent chords intercept congruent arcs. That's the last theorem of the day. So technically you have all your notes if you have to leave, but I will do examples so everyone else stay. We have some example problems, but that's the end of taking notes. All right, here's an, a chord example. I told you these would be easier than the tangent one. Segment NP is the diameter of circle Q. Find the measure of arc NO, measure of arc MP, measure of arc OMP, and the distance from M to O. Let's just solve this one together. Let's just dive right in. Okay, the measure of arc NO. Anybody yell it? 65. Cool. I care less about the answer and I care more about the why. Why is arc NO 65 degrees? Because the radius bisected the segment, so it bisected the arc. Good, but why did the radius bisect the chord in the first place? Is there is a distance. It's no. Perpendicular. There we go. Here's the theorem. If a radius is perpendicular to a chord, is it? Is it perpendicular? Yeah. Yes, if a radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and the arc. That's why it's 65. It's 65 because of this angle marking right here and no other reason. Okay, what's the measure of arc MP? 180 minus 65, right? Because it's a semicircle. What? There we go. What kind of arc is this? What's the vocab word? A major arc. Good. What's the measure of that major arc? Anybody? Um, 245. Yay. So we added up, added up, added up, added up. 245. Last question. What's the distance from M to O? 22. And why is that? Because it was all because the radius is perpendicular to the chord. Next example. I'm going to let you try this one. You may private chat me when you know the answers. So when you don't know what segment a variable is referring to, when you don't know, when in doubt, it always begins at an intersection and ends at the very next intersection. That's always. You never have to ask me again. So if I wanted you to find this whole thing, I would have done so with a marking. I would have made it obvious, but I didn't do that. So the distance that Y wants you to find is from intersection to the very next intersection every time. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So given that the radius is 41, they didn't put the radius on the picture yet. So we need to put the radius somewhere, but we want to put it somewhere advantageous to us. That's fancy for to our advantage, right? I am not going to do this and put 41 because I can't do anything with it. I can't use it. What we're going to capitalize on, okay, there you go. We're going to capitalize on the fact that this is a right angle. When we have right angles, we get to use Pythagorean theorem as long as we have a right triangle. Okay, guys, we get it. Okay, can you erase this? Because I only want to show one of them. You get to draw a radius anywhere you want in a circle as long as it connects the center to the circle. So we'll just draw, sure, that looks good. We'll draw this one radius, and we'll label that as 41. What do we label this right here? Nine. nine. Because if a radius is perpendicular to a chord, it bisects the chord. So this is nine, this is 41, and we have a Pythagorean triple on our hands. So do you all see where to draw the radius now? Make a right triangle. Draw the radius to force a right triangle. What's the answer for why? 40. 40. A beautiful triple. Y is 40. Good. Last problem of the day. Draw your own picture. A chord is located 5 inches from the center of a circle with radius 13. Find 
the length of the cord. Let's make sure we have a good picture. Okay, so I have a circle, I have a center, and I have a cord. The distance from the cord to the center of the circle, there's only one distance from the cord to the center, and it's this perpendicular segment from the middle of the cord to the center of the circle, if that makes sense. So this is five. It can't be any point, because all of these are different. This is different from this, is different from this, no. So it's only the perpendicular segment. Got to get fancy here, right? You got to do this. What's the answer? Y'all can shout it out. 24. Yeah, you got to read carefully. Find the length of the cord. Oh. So good. 12. Oh, if a radius is perpendicular to a cord, it bisects the cord. So 12 and 12. The answer is 24. The answer to the problem is 24. Please try your homework. There's a tangent side and there's a cord side. I would say the tangent side, there's only one theorem. So spend more time on the cord side because you need to know the theorems by tomorrow for your quiz.